Well, not content with trying to force religion into the European Constitution, now the Catholic Church is interfering in British politics. This week, a cardinal and an archbishop have both threatened to withhold communion from Catholic MPs who don't vote against abortion. Personally, I've always thought it was a shame that the Virgin Mary never had the right to choose because then we might have been spared 2,000 years of misery and bloodshed. But it wasn't to be. And so, for Catholics, abortion has always been a tricky one, especially if you're using a knitting needle in a back alley, which is the Catholic Church's preferred method. Because when it comes to Catholic dogma, human life is only sacred if you obey the rules. Hence, no condoms for Africa. We don't want those people doing anything immoral, so we're going to let them die. This is from an organization supposedly founded on the teachings of Jesus. I'm not sure what teachings exactly. It must be the bit where Jesus talks about living in palaces full of art treasures, protecting paedophiles and collaborating with the Nazis. I haven't actually managed to find that passage myself, but I'm sure it must be in the gospel somewhere. And this is why I wasn't too surprised when I first heard that the current Pope is in fact an ex-Nazi, because to me, the Catholic Church and Nazism go together as naturally as Bibles and lynch mobs. If you think of one, it's difficult not to think of the other. Indeed, I've often thought that it was just bad luck for the Catholic Church that Nazism never became respectable, because they put all their chips on the number of the beast, but it just didn't happen for them. Although the Pope, who actually collaborated with Hitler by ignoring the Holocaust, is now being made a saint for his trouble. That's right, Pius XII is being made a saint, which has got to be the cheekiest thing I've heard since Henry Kissinger had the nerve to accept the Nobel Peace Prize. I'm not sure why it is that the Catholic Church exudes this aura of not so much evil as, well, actually, yes, evil. I think this whole celibacy thing has a lot to answer for, because there's got to be so much repressed energy there with nowhere to go. I mean, that's bound to cause a few short circuits. I can understand somebody being celibate if that's how they're comfortable, but if you're doing it as a penance, denying your most powerful basic urges because you think that God is going to be pleased with you, well, I think you should see a doctor, because those inner demons that you're struggling with so manfully are really nothing that a $20 whore couldn't put right in a couple of minutes. But of course you couldn't do that because that would be sinful. Much better to insert your penis into a choir boy and then carry on lecturing dying Africans on sexual abstinence. If any cardinals or bishops are watching this video, let me ask you a question. On a theological level, is it more of a sin for a priest to rape a child while wearing a condom or not wearing one? How much more evil is it to wear the condom? And would it be okay, i.e. would you keep quiet about it, if he went to confession afterwards and truly repented? Until the next time. The Catholic Church has lost so much money on this scandal. They must be down to their last few billion by now. If you were Pope, wouldn't it make sense to try and add up all the sex abuse that's been committed so far, and then add up all the money that's been paid out in compensation, and then you might be able to work out exactly how much the church is paying for, say, one blowjob, and whether it might be more economical to buy the same product from a professional sex worker. That way, you'd be helping to employ somebody in a legitimate occupation, well, certainly one that's more legitimate than yours is, your holiness, your eminence, your grace. Little word of advice. Clean your own stained glass windows before you start cleaning everybody else's, and then people might take you a little more seriously. Peace.